when people think of tofu, they think of bland, weird, boring. It's just this block that comes in a box. But tofu can be so much more than that. My name is Paul Ng. I'm the owner of Fang An Tofu Shop. My family business has been around since 1933, and ultimately making tofu is my life now. We make about 500 pounds of tofu a day. I guess I'm lucky that I make the stuff that I love to eat. When I took over the family business, uh, I had no knowledge of making tofu. There was lots of trial and error, you know. Even, even now I have trial and error, because I'm still trying to perfect it. Making tofu is like making cheese, except that you have to make the soy milk first. Fresh tofu is made out of two ingredients, soybeans and water. Tofu making is easy and hard at the same time. It's hard to make it taste good unless you put your heart and soul into it. Beans go into the grinder and water's going through it, so soy milk comes out one spout while the pulp comes out another spout. So we go through hundreds of pounds of soybeans a day. It's heavy stuff, so it requires at least two people to make. When the pulp comes out, it comes into a tank where there's already water in it so that we can sort of give it more water to extract more soy milk. That pulp needs to be reground on the next grinder. So the goal in doing that is just to be more efficient in extracting soy milk and getting as much as we can. Back when my grandfather started the business, they hand ground the soybeans using a stone grinder that they would turn in a circle around and around. And now when we make tofu compared to back then, uh, we can make tofu a hundred times faster. During the process, I, I check with a refractometer. A refractometer measures the amount of solids in water. I want to make sure that the quality of the soy milk is at its peak. Now, not necessarily having really strong soy milk means having great tofu. It has to be the right level of soy milk. So when the soy milk gets pumped out, it looks like a, a bubble bath. And I suppose, you know, sitting in a pool of soy milk, but you know, that's maybe better left unsaid. There's a lot of foam in the production of uh, soy milk, and I don't want any of it to go to waste because there's potential in all this stuff. So we scoop up the foam into buckets and then we load it into the cooking vat just so that we get every last drop of the soybean. Soy milk in its raw condition cannot be uh, consumed. Raw soy milk is not digestible. Back in the day, my grandfather used to cook soy milk in a big wok. I mean, it would take forever since uh, you know, it was this huge wok in a small flame. It took three hours to get soy milk to boil. Compared to what we do now, it takes it about 15 minutes. Good soy milk is the key to making good tofu. Soy milk is the basic essence of all soy products that you would see. So you can make tofu out of it, hard or soft. You can make drinking soy milk out of it. You can make tofu pudding out of it. It's just the essence of all of it. And the key is if it's good. The difference between the tofu pudding and tofu blocks, it's the same process, the same coagulant, the same everything. A coagulant is something that turns it into curds, like much like you would make cheese. And you break it up. So the process of breaking up and making tofu, this part is still essentially the same as it was, has it ever been for thousands of years. Imagine taking over a tofu business and having no knowledge of how to make tofu. I had to ask family members, but family members' recollection of the recipes and how to make stuff was kind of fuzzy. They would say a cup of this or a spoon of that. I decided to have certain family members do the physical process in front of me to show me how to do it and even they couldn't do it. People always constantly talk about tradition versus modern technology. Recreating the recipes at home in a small setting versus a production level is quite different. When people think of machines, they think that it's an automated system, but it's not. It's quite still mechanical. The machines, at least the, what we use. Uh, so it requires a person to, to make sure that the quality of the soy milk coming out that makes the tofu is good the strength of it, how much water they were asking, uh, how fine the grind is. All this is why it's important that the person who makes the tofu cares about it. I'm the type of person who, if I do something, I have to care about it. If I don't care about it, then I shouldn't do it. 
There were many things that I didn't quite like about the old business. Basically, there were lots of pitfalls in the technology at the time. The press that we use is a pneumatic press, and it gives exactly precisely 75 pounds of pressure. Back in the old days, they used anything and everything they could possibly use to press the tofu. Well, it was either bricks, rocks, or sacks of rice. Now we use fabricated molds, especially made for tofu making. But back in the day when my grandfather was making it, they used whatever they could, and most often it was a soda crate. The soda crate had exactly the precise squares necessary to make tofu. Soda crates were made out of wood. And obviously, after a while with water and everything, wood warped. It wasn't that long where they would have to replace it pretty constantly. It took quite a while to get like 100 blocks of tofu because they were literally pressing one block of tofu at a time. Now, to make 100 blocks of tofu would probably take 20 minutes. The person who's making the tofu is important because they're the person who decides whether that consistency was good or it was done right. It makes a world of a difference. You have firm tofu, you have soft tofu. How firm, how soft is the person making it? Tofu is a blank slate. You know, you can do whatever you want. The difference between the person who really loves making tofu and just the worker doing it is that tofu is going to taste better to the person eating the tofu. My kids actually love the tofu pudding. Well, one kid loves it. There's always the hater. With the tofu pudding, we want a very smooth, delicate texture. You don't disturb. You just pour and let it sit and form. It's still quite traditional in how it's made. When we scoop the tofu pudding in front of people, it's the traditional way of serving it. You look in and you see the tofu pudding. It's literally being scooped for them like, like ice cream. The act of scooping for someone is almost like a performance. There is a way of doing it. It's not just any old way. You have to scoop it in thin little layers or else you would create too much water from scooping too deeply. Tofu pudding eaten the traditional way, at least for us, is just the tofu pudding with a brown sugar syrup on top. In Chinese, it's called the tofu flour, you know, like something delicate. My family business has been around for 87 years, since 1933. There was obviously immense family pressure. How to be and what to do and the products to make. They were really looking for me to extend the legacy of the family business. Making tofu is my life now. Sometimes it's lost on me on why I'm doing this. You know, running the family business and carrying the tradition of making tofu is a real challenging and difficult path. Yeah, I mean, I question myself, why do I do this day after day? To make my family proud? Mm, sort of. So to make great tofu? Yeah, possibly. But the biggest reason I do this is to support my kids and my family. Thank you.